I am so excited for this video. It's not even funny. I'm so excited. Let's go. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zoe and I'm so happy that you clicked on today's video. So this video and the other one, the opposite one that I'm going to post, are two that I have been literally so excited to film the entire year of 2023. I made this same video back in 2022 um, and I had the most fun just talking about all of my favorite and least favorite books of the year. And now we're here, 2023 is over. I read 113 books, which means I surpassed my Goodreads reading goal of 100. Of course, numbers are not everything. They don't actually matter, but it is really fun just to kind of challenge myself and see how much I can read in a year. And I'm feeling really good about how many I read, but with reading that many books comes the challenge of trying to pick which books were your favorites and your least favorites because there were just so many, it's really, really hard to choose. But today I did choose 23 of my favorite books from 2023. I feel like they're mostly in order, but not exactly. I would say the first 10 are gonna be in order. Um, and then after that, it's like kind of all over the place. My opinions change a lot. Um, but I actually think we're gonna go in reverse order. So I'm gonna start with my least favorite of the favorites and work my way up to my top three books of 2023. And I'm so excited. This is gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to give you guys all my thoughts. Let's just get into it. So the way I choose favorite books is not necessarily based on how incredible the writing was or how profound the story was. It's more just vibes. It's if I felt in my heart, if I felt a connection to it, if it stuck with me for a long time, whatever that may be. And this first one really did stick with me. So my number 23 book is going to be The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. I read this one back in July when I did my first ever 24 hour reading challenge. And I was really pleasantly surprised by it. I just flew through it and I thought it was so cute. It's basically this book about an author who ends up being basically the star of a reality dating show, kind of like The Bachelor, but she ends up falling in love with someone other than the contestants, and it's just literally so cute, so wholesome. I love Christina Lauren, and this one was honestly one of my favorite books of theirs, so that one had to make the list. Coming in at number 22, we have a thriller, actually. We have The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. This was my first Sally Hepworth book. I read it back in February, and I was so blown away by it. Like, I feel like I've read so many thrillers that they're really hard to kind of impress me and stick with me, but this one was so crazy good. The premise of the story is basically this husband and wife live in this house um, that's next to a cliff that a lot of people jump off of you know, um, and the wife is just very troubled by it. She doesn't want the people to get hurt, so she always has her husband go out and stop them until one night he goes out there and does not stop the person, and so you're kind of trying to figure out what happened the whole time, if the husband was the person who committed the crime, if he didn't get there in time, kind of what happened, and it's so, so good, so many twists and turns, I just absolutely loved it. Coming in at number 21, I actually had a hard time putting this one so low on the list, okay, but I just read so many good books, it was just kind of just down there, I don't know, but we have Ignite Me by Tahara Mafi. This is the third book in the Shatter Me series, which if you ask me my favorite series of 2023, this is up there, if not my absolute favorite, like I loved Shatter Me, but I feel like I have a harder time ranking series, like individual books, higher up because one book is not the whole series, if you know what I mean. Like, this is just a little part of the story, but this book was so good. I loved it, obsessed, read it so quickly. This is technically the original ending of the series because it was originally just a trilogy, but then she added on to it, and in my opinion, this book is when the series got really, really good, and I just loved it. Next up at number 20, we have an author that's actually on this list more than once. We have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Um, this one, I've been like slowly working my way through Emily Henry books because I love Beach Read. January and Gus, love them so much. Like when I watch you sleep, I feel overwhelmed that you exist. Yes, that's everything to me. So I was like, it's time for me to read more Emily Henry books. I still hadn't read this one. And I was kind of scared because I've heard really mixed reviews about it, but I loved it. I loved Poppy and Alex. I loved like the travel aspect of the book because I am somebody who is really interested in traveling. And I just felt like this one read a lot more easily than the other books of hers that I've read. I felt like I was just able to fly through it a lot more easily and I was obsessed with it. Number 19 is another author that's on here more than once. This one was so incredibly good to me. We have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'd had this book for a couple years and I still hadn't gotten around to reading it. I don't really know why, I guess just because it's more of a genre that's typically outside of my comfort zone, so I kind of just avoided it. 
but I read it because the show was coming out and when I tell you this book like cemented Taylor Jenkins Reid as my favorite author because I'd already loved her other book that I'd read so much and then I read this one and I was like she's just incredible um I loved the different like interview style format of this book I loved our characters I loved like the 70s rock band vibes very much like Fleetwood Mac and I just this book was everything to me. I think about it all the time. Love it so much. Number 18 is going to be The Two of Us by Taylor Torres. This is a debut novel from Taylor Torres. She is a bookstagrammer author. I love her so much. And this book I was so excited for because this is like my favorite type of trope, favorite type of book. I say this all the time. It's that childhood friends to lovers, they break apart and then years later reconnect in life and fall in love again. I've said it once, I'll say it a million times. I will read every single iteration of that type of story. Like, it's just my favorite thing ever. It makes me sob. It makes me so happy. It breaks my heart. It is everything to me. So whenever there's a book like that, I will be reading it and I will love it. So this book was so good. She actually put out a special edition with a new cover and I pre-ordered it and it's coming late in January and I'm so pumped because I just love this book so much. Next, number 17. Again, this is one that I had trouble putting so low on the list, but... It's not a single standalone book, so I put it a little bit lower, but we have Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. When I tell you how obsessed I am with this book, you know, now that I'm saying it's number 17, it has me like really rethinking things. I think if I were to do this over, it would be a lot higher on the list, but for the sake of continuing this video, we're gonna keep it there. But this book is everything. It's the second book in a duology. The first one is Dance of Thieves. And my friend Bethany got me to read these. And I was honestly really hesitant. I was not a fantasy girly at the beginning of 2023 at all. I really didn't want to read it. But she convinced me and I was so obsessed. I love this duology so much. I love our characters. I love the fast-paced action that happens in it. The second book is so painful and so stressful, but it's so good. I read this one. It's over 500 pages. I read it in 24 hours. So like, I don't read that quickly, so that's crazy. And also like the couple in this second book, it almost gives like Katniss and Peeta, which was everything to me. So safe to say I loved it. Next at 16 we have a book that is really really special to me. I have Loveless by Alice Oseman. Alice Oseman, if you know me, is one of my favorite authors. She wrote Heartstopper and Radio Silence among other books and I'd had this book for quite some time but I kind of avoided it because I felt like it was going to be really special to me and I didn't want to read it and then never be able to read it for the first time again. You know like sometimes I just avoid books like that because I'm like I know they're going to be so good. That I don't want it to be over. So I avoided it, but I finally read it, I think in February for like Valentine's Day, and it was just so special, so precious. I like tabbed the crap out of this book. Um, everything about it was so good. It really like spoke to me, it meant a lot to me. Um, I felt like I could relate to a lot of it, and I feel like it also kind of gave me a look into like that college life, like living at university, get, making friends, like coming of age, becoming an adult, because I did not have that experience. So I really enjoyed reading about it in here. And this one will just always be really, really near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Next at number 15, we have an incredibly underrated book. We have A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. This is a book that I got from Book of the Month and avoided for a long time because it's not my typical genre, didn't think I was going to like it, and then I randomly picked it up on a rainy day and devoured it in one sitting. Again, which I don't do very often, I was just so wowed by this book. I thought the writing was so good and there was so much like mystery and suspense. You did not know what was going on until the very end. And I tell a lot of people, if you like the movie Don't Worry Darling, read this book because it's that same sort of like what the heck is going on factor that you love about the movie. That's what's going to happen in this book and it is just so good. This was a five star read for me and I wish more people would read it. Next up, number 14, we have a repeat author. We have Happy Place by Emily Henry. I feel like this book is going to make a lot of people's favorite list for 2023 because it was just that good. It was so popular for good reason. Like, this was a really, really special book. It does have, like, fake dating, one bed. Um, it has, like, a really, really strong friend group. It's such a good romance, but it's also so much more than a romance because it, it again, is about... A group of friends and they're kind of just trying to learn how to live life on their own now that they're not at college together anymore and they're learning that like it's okay to grow apart a little bit and I feel like that part like the coming of age learning to grow apart from your friends like that really hit me hard and it really stuck with me so that I think is why this book is on this list and why it's as high as it is because I just 
it really, really spoke to me. Next up at number 13, we have a book that I am so excited to talk about. We have Safe Harbor by Kay Cinco. This is another debut author. I randomly found her on Instagram and her book sounded really cute. It's like a little YA book set in the summertime at the beach about a girl who works at an ice cream shop and she has first love, first heartbreak. It's like such a fun book and I was really intrigued so I read it on Kindle Unlimited and just absolutely fell in love. Like this book was so good. It was not just all cute and sunshine and rainbows. There was also some really hard stuff to read, which I feel like gave it a lot of depth and it made it that much better to me. I feel like this book is just such a hidden gem and it's actually gonna be part of a series. The next book is coming out next year and I personally cannot wait for it. I will be reading everything Kay Single writes because I am obsessed with it and she is such a sweet human as well. Um, and I just think more people should read this book because it's so good. Next up, we have another thriller. This is coming in at number 12. We have The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Oh my goodness. When I tell you, I was so obsessed with this book. This was my second book by Taylor Adams. I also read No Exit and I was honestly really underwhelmed by that book, but everybody seemed to be reading this one and loving it. So I decided to give it a shot and I was just floored by everything that happened. Um, it's basically about this girl who is house sitting at this kind of secluded house on a beach and she gives an author a one star rating on Amazon and he kind of <laughs> does not like this and retaliates by um, literally stalking her and it is so crazy. You kind of start to be like, is this real? Is it not? It's very much like unreliable narrator and there are so many twists and turns. You never know what's happening and what's real and what's fake. So. I loved it. I immediately made my mom go read it and she loved it as well. It was just so, so good. Cannot recommend it enough. Number 11 is a really special book to me. I actually read this one twice this year. We have Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I, this was another one that I kind of avoided because I knew I was going to love it so much. Um, and I am so happy that I finally did read it, obviously, because I read it twice. Um, once was to annotate for a friend, um, but I loved this book. Just like the two of us, it's another one of the situations of childhood best friends to lovers break apart and then come back together later in life and fall in love again. And again, I will eat that up every single time. Like, I just love it. I don't know what it is, but it is genuinely my favorite thing you could give me in a book. And I will just devour it and love it and it will be so special to me and I will hold it in my heart forever. This book is so good. Macy and Elliot, just perfect. I love them so much. Like, they're precious and I will read this a million times and never get tired of it. This book was perfect. That's what I can say. Number 10 is a really, really special book to me. We have The First to Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is the prequel to They Both Die at the End, which I honestly was not a big fan of, but this one was the complete opposite. This was, I think, the second book that I read in 2023, and I still think about it an entire year later because it meant so much to me. Basically, you follow these two boys who are meeting on the first day that death cast exists death cast if you haven't read the first book is basically this thing that lets you know when you're gonna die it, like when it's your death day it will notify you so that you can make the most of your last day um and it's the first day it exists we're in new york city in times square and one of them gets a call from death cast and it's like this super super tragic thing but the two of them decide to make the most of it with this last day um and they fall in love along the way and it is such a beautiful story but it also i think what made it stick with me so much was the fact that it really made me think about how precious life is and how meaningful every decision you make is and how you choose to react to things makes such a big impact on your life um and how much you're able to enjoy it and make the most of it and i think that was just a really really valuable lesson that will stick with me forever obviously it stuck with me for a year and i don't think it's gonna go away anytime soon Coming in at number nine, we have another book that I've had for so long and I finally got around to, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This was so good. I am trying to get more into Greek mythology. I don't read it too often, but I want to more. And this was the first step and I just loved it. I loved it so much. Um, I thought the writing was so beautiful, like so good. Um, and I'm not like a big writing snob. You can honestly have pretty bad writing and I won't even mind, I won't even notice. But this writing was really good. It also was just such a beautiful story. And I know it's obviously not like an original story because it's taken from Greek mythology, but I thought the way that she did it was beautiful and magical and I loved it. The love was so beautiful. The end made me burst into tears. It was just a perfect book. It was so good. 
Next we have a book that combines two of the things from the last two books. We have a perfect book and a book that made me think about the importance of life and how you react to every little situation. We have The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. She's the author of The Dead Romantics, which I really enjoyed, but I would not say it's a favorite book. And I was excited to read this one because the cover is really cute, the premise sounded cute, and people were loving it. And I was not disappointed in the slightest. I thought this was such a beautiful story. Ashley Poston does this really cool thing where she takes really simple love stories but includes magical realism in them and super weird twists that you would never expect to make them not normal and really original and I think she is just so incredible at it. I cannot wait for her new book in 2024 because this one blew me away, sticks with me. The love was absolutely breathtaking but also just the lessons that I learned from this book were amazing. It made me sob. I feel like I've said enough. Coming in at number seven is a book that I could just gush about forever. Um, this one, honestly, it was really hard to rank. I wanted to rank it higher, but I feel like from here on out, all the books are pretty much on the same level except for the top three. This one we have More Than Just Us by my friend Allie. She let me read this book early and I feel so genuinely like thankful and grateful that she let me do that, but also like when I tell you this book is so incredible, it's coming out in 2024 and you guys are not even ready. You don't even know what's coming. I think it's so cool that I can say my friend wrote a book, that she's going to be an author, and you might think that I'm just giving this a, you know, glowing review because I'm friends with her, but that is absolutely not the case. I would feel the same way even if I wasn't friends with her. Like, this book was just so good. Like, first of all, Allie is such a good writer. Like, the book flowed so easily and just the words she used and the way she phrased things, like, I literally have chills right now. Like, <laughs> if that doesn't tell you how much I loved it, like, it was so good, but also just the story was beautiful. Like, our couple in this story, their love is so cute. And there's also really, really good mental health rep in this book that made me sob because it made me really feel seen and feel less alone. And I think it was so important to Valley to include mental health rep and to do it in such an incredible way. Like, she covered it these really heavy topics in such a good way and I'm so proud of her for what she did and I just can't wait to get the book in my hands and annotate it and have like five copies on my shelf and give it to friends for Christmas and birthdays and just shout from the rooftops how much I love this book and how proud I am of her. It is just so good and I cannot wait for it to be released to the world and for everyone to be able to read it. Ali, I love you. Next up at number six, we have a book that kind of took over my life for a little bit. You guys might have been around when that happened. I don't know. Maybe you saw the videos, but we have Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I've had this book since it came out in 2015, like original first edition of this book, and I never read it because I was not interested in it when I bought it. I don't even know why I ever bought it because I was not a fantasy person back then. This was completely outside of my comfort zone. And then I read Shadow and Bone a few years ago and was so underwhelmed that I was like, I don't want to read this. But I took a chance. I tried it. And I freaking loved it so much. This and the second book, Crooked Kingdom, incredible. Loved it so much. Um, both of them, like, these are so special to me, mean so much to me. I love our core six, the crows. They are so fun. But I loved this one more than Crooked Kingdom just because I love the heist that they went on. I feel like it was so much fun to read about. I love the romance in these books. Like, it is just everything amazing and incredible and fun and good all wrapped into a duology that blew me away and I will truly never stop thinking about it or telling people to read it. So, loved it so much. We are now into the top five and I feel like all of these books are books that I a, talk about all the time and B, like they're just so special to me. I feel like I could gush for forever, but this video is already really long. Okay, I got cut off, kind of rude. I'll try to keep all this stuff brief, but I'm just so excited to talk about all of this. So the fifth book in this list, we have Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. This book was another one that was really not my typical type of genre, but my friend Reagan convinced me to read it. She said it was super good and I gave it a shot and I was so blown away. There's now a TV show and I've started watching it and it's so good, but nothing like the book as TV shows typically go. Like this was such an incredible story centering around this family and the mom has all of these hidden secrets. She kind of has like a hidden past and after she passes away, she leaves a recording for her kids kind of telling them what her whole life has been and how she misled them and what really went down. And it is so good. It made me cry multiple times. I read it, I think, six months ago, and I still think about it, like, once a week. Like, it's so good. Cannot recommend it enough. Just go read it. 
Next up at number four, we have one that I hold very, very near and dear to my heart. I would say these top four actually are all on the same level. Love them all so much. This one was my introduction to Taylor Jenkins Reid. We have the Seven Husbands, Vevel and Hugo. This is another one that I avoided for so long, even though I knew I was going to love it. Like I knew this was going to be my thing and I avoided it and I finally read it and I hate that I waited so long, but I also love it because I feel like my reading experience was beautiful and incredible and amazing. Oh my gosh, I love this book. I love that it's told kind of in an interview style format, but it's still like a normal book. Um, and I just love reading about Evelyn Hugo and all of her husbands. Obviously some of them absolutely sucked. Some of them were pretty amazing. And reading her life was just so beautiful. This had me sobbing in my room at 3 a.m. I have the ugliest pictures of me crying, um, just being absolutely heart shattered, broken, upset, angry miserable but like also so in love because the book was so incredible this will stick with me literally forever love it so much coming in at number three we have the first book that i read in 2023 this one's so special we have before we were strangers by renee carlino yeah why do i want to cry like i love this book so much this when i really 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 love a book i will make a reel for it and post it on my instagram this was made into a reel and if i watch the reel i get emotional because i love our main couple matt and grace so much this is as it says a love hate love story basically matt and grace meet each other and fall in love in college and then they get broken apart and then they see each other one day on the subway and reconnect and it is the most beautiful thing it's past and present timelines so you kind of go back and forth the whole time the end has the craziest twist and what i love is they go to nyu in this book and it's very much like that nostalgic college experience again that i did not get to experience but reading it makes me feel like i did and i love it so much it just feels so nostalgic um reading it is so beautiful and i love anything set in new york so big 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 fan big fan at number two we have a book that again i read twice this year because i read it when it came out and then read it to annotate it for a friend we have yours truly by abby jimenez oh my goodness i love this book this book is so incredible we follow jacob and brie who meet at a hospital where they work and they end up fake dating because jacob needs a favor brie does as well i'm gonna stop and let you read it because i don't want to spoil anything but it is so good the love is so beautiful there are some tropes in here that i'm not the biggest fan of but the book is so good that i'm able to forget about that let it go and just enjoy it anyway it is just so beautiful and again there is the best mental health and anxiety rep in here it makes me feel so supported and loved and i just i love jacob and brie so much and this book is perfect again a literally absolutely perfect book so good and finally to end this video coming in at number one i'm sure if you have seen any of my videos know anything about me you will know what this book is i'm gonna give you a couple seconds to guess do you have your answers are they locked in what do you think my number one book is if you said practice makes perfect by sarah adams you are 100 correct you are correct this is my favorite book of the year and it is also tied for my favorite book of all time because it's just so so special to me if you know me you know i'm a huge sarah adams fan i like to say i'm her biggest fan you can disagree whatever let me live i personally feel like i'm her biggest fan and this book is her best one hands down it's so precious we follow will who is a bodyguard and annie who is noah from when in rome's little sister and annie needs basically somebody to teach her how to date because she is very unexperienced she's very shy um a little anxious and will does that for her and then they end up falling in love <laughs> so cute um annie runs a flower shop it's so perfect what makes it so special is i have never related to a character so much as i did with annie i genuinely feel like sarah adams studied who i was as a person and wrote it into her character and it's just the most incredible feeling to feel so seen by a character and feel like you're reading about yourself it's just really really cool and i love it so much and i could go on for days about this book it's just my favorite thing ever. I love it so much. You will never find another book that means more to me than this one. My friend Bethany actually got me a sweatshirt for Christmas that is from this book and it is literally my most prized possession. I love it with my whole heart, just like I do this book. So if you can take anything away from this whole video, it's that you should read this book because it's, it's perfect. It's beautiful. It's amazing. 
I'm gonna go cry now. So those were the top 23 books that I read in 2023. Again, I felt like that was really hard to choose. I'm so sorry this video was so long, but gotta give you the rundown of everything. Um, and I was just, that was so much fun to talk about. I just loved all of those books and I feel like they'll all stick with me for a long time. So if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy that you're here. If you wanna like, comment, and subscribe, that helps me so much. Or if you wanna be friends, all of my socials are linked down below. And with that, I'm going to let you guys go because this has been forever long. But thank you so much for watching. I'm so thankful for all of you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.